How you doing? It's the old gunsmith with you again. Going to try and give you a little bit of history on the background of the Polish Mausers. Um, Poland was had been broken apart and for 150 years did not exist as a country until after the First World War. Uh, after the First World War, the Peace Commission uh, laid Poland back out and one of the things they did to give them a chance to actually be a successful nation was they gave them an outlet to the sea through the uh, uh, by giving them the Polish corridor and the uh, capital of uh, Danzig. Danzig had an arsenal that had been making the German 98A carbine during World War One. So since the majority of the population of Gdansk was German and were not exactly thrilled to all of a sudden become part of Poland, uh, there was a lot of tension there. The Poles looked at it and decided that there was a real good chance that this was going to be a really temporary uh, thing. So they took all of the machinery from the Gdansk arsenal and all the parts and everything that they get their hands on and moved it down to Warsaw. They set up in Warsaw and started making uh, the Mauser rifles for the Polish uh, army using the uh, machinery and leftover parts they took out of Gdansk. So their first model was the KBK. This particular one was made in 1929, but that's neither here nor there. And if you will look at it, you'll see that it looks an awful lot like the German 98A as made uh, during World War I. Uh, it has the same stacking hook, it has the same furniture on the uh, knows basically all of this furniture came out of the uh, Danzig arsenal and was uh, relocated in Poland. Uh, this particular one was, as I said, made in 1929. And uh, what the Poles did is they basically decided that they needed to learn how to make the rifle. So they started making them in uh, Warsaw. And it's uh, been said that the Warsaw made rifles are not as well finished. Uh, or as uh, uh, well put together as those made in uh, Germany. And that's probably true. The Warsaw rifles were some of the first ones uh, made. This one was uh, 1927. And this is the Warsaw rifle. You will see that it's got the Polish crest and Warsaw in Polish, as well as the date of manufacture. So this is all made on German equipment that was taken out of the Gdansk ar arsenal and moved to Poland. Uh, it wasn't too long before they took the uh, machinery there and moved it down to the Radom arsenal. Uh, Radom had been making uh, pistols, they've been making the uh, Nagant revolvers for the Polish army under license uh, to the Russians, I believe. And uh, they were just starting to tool up for their uh, Viz pistol. So they needed to learn basically from the beginning how to make rifles. It was not something they had done before. They had always used somebody else's. So they uh, started making them and over time they improved. Uh, what we will find is that you will rarely find a Polish Mauser, if you can find a Polish Mauser, that is uh, in pristine condition. That's because they only made, of, of the 20 to 50 million Mausers made around the world of all types and descriptions, there were less than 300,000 made in Poland. So they're extremely rare and that makes them very collectible. Uh, there are several different variations. We, we talked about the first one which was the, the carbine version and you can tell that by the, hinged. the hinged barrel band and uh, the stacking hook under it. They soon made a long rifle, looked very much like the uh, uh, GEW, the German GEW, and then they, what they really produced mostly was short rifles, and that, these are two examples of the short rifles here. Uh, one was made in Warsaw, but like most Polish Mausers, it's been around the block a few times. Uh, keep in mind that in 1939, when uh, Poland was invaded from the uh, west by Germany, and from the east by the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had a uh, real uh, uh, cause to hate 
uh, the Poles because the Poles had defeated them in setting the eastern boundary of Poland in the 1920 war, but that gets into a whole different section of history. When Poland made the Mausers, they were generally stocked in some kind of a birch stock. Uh, this particular one made in 1931 at the Radom Arsenal uh, is, is typical Polish. It's got a uh, bar here for a sling that would be uh, attached up here on the side. That is so that they could sling them because the Poles had a lot of cavalry and they could sling them across their back without having the trigger guard or anything else hitting them. Basically, you've got a flat side here to rest against your back as you're riding your horse. Uh, the Poles were real big on cavalry, unfortunately, because uh, it was very effective against the Russians in the 1920 war and very ineffective against the Germans uh, <laughs> in the uh, 39 war. Uh, this particular one is typical of what you'll find in, in uh, Polish Mausers. You're either going to find them well used in uh, Polish stocks, or very often you will find them like this. When the Russian, I mean the Germans took over Poland, uh, they did not start making any more po rifles at the Radom plant. They went and continued making the, the Viz pistol, but they did not continue making Mausers. They had enough capacity on their own. So what would happen is they would take captured Polish Mausers and they would use them until they had to be reworked. They would go into the uh, uh, arsenals and they would be refitted with German stocks. This is a, a, would be a typical example of exactly that. This is a the Warsaw made uh, Mauser and it is in a late war German laminated stock. I don't know whether you can see the laminations but it's glued together because they were, the Germans by that time we're running out of wa uh, walnut or beech to make one-piece stocks, and they started laminating stocks together to, that had enough uh, wood stocks to uh, mount the rifles in. So here we've got a typical example of a captured Polish Mauser that is wearing all German hardware. This was uh, uh, the Mauser as found as the Poles used it, which as I said was in a uh, birch stock and this is their short rifle. It is uh, chambered in 8mm Mauser, 8x57, the same as uh, the Germans were, and uh, that was made ammunition uh, very easy to come by. Two interesting things you'll find that there are two types of bayonets that go with these rifles. Okay, the first type is made in Radom. This is the, uh, uh, the bayonet, the, the WP and uh, Radom Arsenal, FB Radom on this side. And you will notice that this is a typical Mauser bayonet. You see the wood scales here and the ring up front and there's no flash uh, suppressor, no, no uh, flash hider on that. That was to go on the short rifle. And it's pretty easy to look at this and see that you didn't have a problem with the flash of the uh, fired round burning the wood. The second type of Polish bayonet was made by Prukin and it's labeled Prukin here. It's got the diamond on it and WP and the Polish Eagle on it. These were made to fit on the original 98A style. And you will see when this is mounted, when the firearm is shot, of course there's no front ring, when the firearm is shot the bullet passes over this and of course the flash of the uh, powder would burn the grips right off of the uh, bayonets. So the Prukin bayonets meant for this rifle all had a steel backing on the top of the grip so that the scales, the wood scales on the side would not get burned. So that's, that's exactly why that was designed that way where the other bayonet was, the muzzle was up by the blade itself rather than down by the scales. So you can take a, a very quick look at these two side by side. Yeah.
see that some thought went into placement of the bayonet and what they were going to have to do to keep the bayonet on this one from having the, the wooden scales burned right off from the flash of the muzzle. So it was uh, actually designed to be used that way. Uh, I think what we'll do is let's from here go out to the range and there's not much else to tell you about a Mauser. They're typical in that they have the uh, stripper clip guides. Uh, I have just purchased this Warsaw Mauser fairly recently and uh, let's go out and we're going to put some rounds down range. I've got some 8mm uh, uh, cast bullet loads put together and let's see if we can make this old beast shoot. As we've discussed, Polish Mausers have an uh, interesting history. This particular one, okay, we can read some of the history in it. First of all, as it says up here, that it was PFK Warsaw 1927. Of course, it doesn't say Warsaw, it says Warsaw, which is the, Polish. Uh, Polish Mausers, of course, were used by the Poles at the beginning of the war. In 1939, Germany attacked, and when Poland surrendered, uh, half of Poland was overrun by Germany, the other half was overrun by Russia. So, when captured by the Germans, these were just put into service because the Polish short rifle was pretty much the same as their 98K. Um, virtually identical to their 98K. So this one, at some point along the way, maybe in 39, maybe later, I uh, had st the stock had been damaged, and it had been. This is a, a late war laminated German stock that it's sitting in. Uh, you can perhaps see the laminates here, where the Germans were running out of uh, uh, walnut, so they were using thin slices and gluing them together. So this one's had kind of a, an interesting history. We know that uh, the Germans captured it. We know that it had been rebuilt by the Germans during the war. And from there it was captured by somebody else, the, either the Russians or the Americans or British, uh, that it came back to the States. Uh, we're going to try some cast bullets in it. Uh, we haven't uh, shot this one before. We just, just bought it. Uh, I've got some cast bullet loads we'll try at 50 yards just to see where it's at. And how it shoots. These cast bullets are lo loaded with uh, 20 grains of 2400 and a 165 grain gas checked lead bullet. Eleven thirty, outer green ring. Okay, uh, that's five shots. Now, as I said, I just bought this. I have not shot anything through it. These are the first five shots I've put through the gun. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.